Hi, I'm Karina Larson with Bismarck Cancer Center. I'm one of the survivorship nurses here. Um, with Bismarck Cancer Center, what we primarily do is radiation for cancer patients. Um, we are co-owned by both hospitals. Um, as a survivorship nurse, I work with education um, of side effects of radiation, but also of um, behavior changes such as quitting smoking um, and the effects of smoking and um, lung cancer. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about e-cigarettes, whether they're friend or foe, um, kind of showing like an overview of some tobacco and e-cigarettes and um, cancer as well. So overview of tobacco, also talk about the e-cigarettes and kind of the, the deception that has happened over the years. When we first think about tobacco, um, the first product that comes to mind is, of course, cigarettes. The products nowadays look a whole lot different. They come in lots of different forms. They're fruity, sweet, sourful, sour and colorful. Lots of different, um, like into liquid, chew, cigars, hookahs, e-cigarettes. But um, so I wanna kind of talk to you a little bit about the difference between tobacco and then e-cigarettes. So tobacco, um, way back in the early 1800s, um, was considered a cash crop. Um, it still is a cash crop, but for different purposes. This was used a lot for bartering, trading, um, plantation farmers, chewed it, smoked it, um, made cigars and stuff like that. And so we look and we see the tobacco plant, we see all the different forms, the chew, the snuff, the cigars, and then all the way to the manufactured cigarettes that we know nowadays. And um, the, the plant itself has a lot of chemicals in it. There are over 7,000 different chemicals um, with 70 known carcinogens. Carcinogens meaning causing cancer. Um, things like arsenic, which is rat poisoning, vinyl chloride, formaldehyde, and benzene, to name a few. So what happened was they take these leaves and there's, tr there's ways to try to dry it, um, take changing the um, flavor and stuff of it, speeding up the process to get to that manufactured um, cigarette. And um, in 1930, there were a lot of um, issues and concerns about health. And so they actually started doing a research study in 1948, and they looked at it and saying, hey, there is a correlation between tobacco products causing lung and oral cancers. Um, and then in 1954 was actually when we first see the very first manufactured cigarettes, like the ones that you see over on the very top left side. Um, so when we look at that history, then we know that, okay, it's not, it's not good for us. Um, there's a lot of issues causing cancer. And so everybody started, um, tobacco companies started advertising and saying, okay, we need to start labeling on the outside of the packages of that these may cause harm, cause cancer. So we see this huge trend from 1965 to 2017. Adults are knowing that it's not good for you. And so we see that decrease in from smoking to less amount of smoking. But overall in 2017, 47 million US adults were still using some sort of form of tobacco products. And so then we're looking at like 34 million were still smoking um, 2018 and 19. Um, and like, who is that population? That population was men, mostly men, adults 25 to 64 years old, those with a lower education below the poverty line and in that Midwest and South area. And that of course, due to the fact that um, it was raised, um, is harvested as a crop in that Southwestern um, parts of the US. And so some of the things that they were finding of getting the way of decreasing was implementing smoke-free laws, running mass campaigns, um, raising tobacco prices, and also making those who um, wanted to quit smoking, giving them better access um, on ways on how to quit. And so then they started doing the study about the youth because we're seeing adults trending downward. What's happening with the youth population? And nearly one in every 50 middle school students who were smoking cigarettes had decreased down um, from 2000, was a decrease from 2011. And then two out of every 25 high school students was also a decrease. So we're seeing that 
smoking is decreasing and smokeless tobacco, such as um, chewing tobacco, was also decreasing as well, which is great. But the other problem was that we started seeing this trend going upward of, um, so tobacco products going down, but e-cigarettes going up. Um, more than 2 million middle, high school, and college students were actually vaping. And when I say e-cigarettes and vape, it's kind of the same thing, okay? And so originally, um, back in the 90s, e-cigarettes um, started out looking like the cigarette there on your left. Um, it um, looks very much like a cigarette. It was promoted for a way to quit smoking. Now, e-cigarettes and vapes do not contain any tobacco products, so they don't carry any of those type of carcinogens. But the problem is that they still contain a lot of nicotine. Um, and so then we see that, revolu that evolution of the different types of e-cigarettes from the first generation, the second one there, the jewel, into like a pen form, and then what's called a mod. And so we take and we look at, well, how, is, how does this whole thing work? So you have like the cartridge area, which has the liquid filled portion of it. It has in the center what's called an atomizer. Um, the other ones have what's called a cartomizer, and that's the heater. Um, then there's also a lithium battery that helps to supercharge it, taking that liquid form into a vapor form, into an aerosol. And um, each cigarette typically contains 1.2 milligrams of nicotine. Um, and by smoking a regular cigarette, you inhale about one milligram. Vapors or vapes, e-cigarettes, all contain a lot of different amounts. They're not FDA regulated, so they um, have anywhere from um, one worth one pack of cigarette all the way up to like some of them are even as high as nine packs of cigarettes in one vape pen. So a cartomizer then on the mods or those pins looks a little bit different, but the same concept. The juice is in the inside, then you have this heating coil, which will heat up fat, um, higher than 350 degrees Celsius, which is greater than 660 degrees felt, um, Fahrenheit. So really high because you're taking that from a very liquid thick form to a vapor in a short period of time. Um, E-cigarettes and that start started getting kind of a bad rap due to the fact that all of a sudden some of them were starting to explode. Taking that flashpoint basically, taking something very hot, very liquid thick to very quick vapor was causing some explosions in pants and mouth and here's a picture of a teenager, lost a couple of teeth and ended up getting some stitches. The other problems we were starting to see um, was that vaping was causing a lot of problems with the teeth. Um, what happens is, think of um, like all the different flavors of e-cigarettes that are out there, all those juices. Taking something thick and sticky, making it into a vapor, kind of think of like a um, hairspray bottle. When you spray it up in the air, you still see all those particles. And then later it kind of sticks down on things. Well, this is happening in the mouth as well. So it sticks onto the teeth, um, causing um, some of the tar will cause that yellowing of the teeth, but also it will cause decaying of the teeth, um, which will lead to chronic um, bad breath as well. But the other thing is, so it doesn't have the tobacco in it, but it has the nicotine. And so how is that bad, right? Well, nicotine does not cause cancer, but it causes other problems. What nicotine will do is um, it does a supercharge or a... Um, it goes into the brain, into the neural receptors of the brain. So this portion of your brain is, is called the nucleus accumbens. And that is the area for like, um, pre like pleasure or something that, that makes you feel good. So think of it kind of this way. If you take a caramel roll, the very first time you've had a caramel roll, Freshly comes out of the oven, it's nice and gooey, smells great, it's awesome. You take you maybe you lather some butter on it, you take a bite, and that bite um, makes you salivate in your mouth, it goes through your system, you digest it, it goes hits these neuroreceptors in the brain, and it tells your body, oh my gosh, this is wonderful, this tastes great. Um, these neuroreceptors, this isn't any different than 
um, not only food, but drugs, alcohol, vape, and nicotine. All of those um, hit into that same center, that pleasure center. And so what happens is the next time then you smell a caramel roll, you can almost taste it. It's kind of like it creates a memory in there. The problem with nicotine though is it's a different type of a drug. And so what it will do is actually hijacks the brain in thinking that its only reward is if it gets nicotine, kind of pushes out all of those other type of things. And this creates what's called a memory. This memory then is like, oh my gosh, I have to have it. I have to have it. I have to have it. And so when you first wake up in the morning, that's the first thing you think of. When you're stressed out, that's the first thing that you think of. So it's basically hijacking the brain. Problem with this is in young brains, the brain is so super active. It is constantly learning. This is a great way that the, this is why we go to school in our young ears, is our, our body and brain know that it can handle so much more information in a short period of time because we need the knowledge and we, our brain is growing. It's growing these neural receptors. And what happens is that all of a sudden then um, it will take away that pleasure part of learning and only wants the nicotine instead. This in long term hijacks the brain and basically starts making um, that youth wanting to what's called dual use. Um, they want to use both um, the vapes and even cigarettes, probably alcohol combined in there, or even a gateway to other drugs and um, everything else gets kind of pushed out, learning it goes down as well. And so when they were studying all these youth, they were showing that this is definitely causing addiction. It's harming that developing brain. And in 2018, they did a survey and finding that one in five high school kids were vaping and one in 20 middle school kids. Why is this concern? Because the middle school kids, this is where all of that learning is super, super developing and this is harming their brains. So what things you know come in play? You need to talk about and talk about the dangers of e-cigarettes. And one of the other things they were looking at is like, well, why are young people um, vaping? And they said primarily due to the flavor. There's over 15,000 different flavors um, in the e-cigarettes, the juices, um, that are drawing people in because remember it doesn't have tobacco it has nicotine nicotine's not bad um, per se and so the flavors sound very appealing and so what they're doing is 81 percent of them were showing that that was the main reason for using it well back in the 70s tobacco companies they know that the tobacco is bad so we're trying to like go away from the addiction part of it and the glamorizing of um, marketing cigarettes. And so they had to stop putting them on the back of magazines, on the billboards, on buses and stuff like that. Well, technically e-cigarettes are not a tobacco product. Um, so they fell out of that and they didn't have to follow. So Jules started glamorizing their jewels by showing young people um, cool pictures of it and actually using the product. As you can see, these are from back in the um, 80s. Um, the top picture, the Virginia Slim, the gal's actually holding a cigarette up. Jewel, you can see next to it, is kind of mimicking it. Um, Keep It Basic was in the, in the early 60s, um, or the, sorry, the 70s, and that's showing with an alcoholic beverage. Jewel mimicking that as well. Lucky Strike from back in the 60s, um, showing eat more vegetables but save room for a Lucky Strike. Um, and the Jewel again showing save room for a Jewel. And so um, some of the things like I'll tell you a little bit here first about Jewel. Jewel um, is looks like a, a flash drive. It's very sleek. It was promoted as a satisfying alternative to cigarettes by accommodating cigarette like nicotine levels, provides satisfaction to meet the standards of smokers looking to switch from smoking cigarettes. The problem is that it contained nicotine salts and I'll kind of go into that a little bit later. So what happened was there was a group of um, young teenagers who were straight A students. They were involved in sports and stuff like that. A group of them were getting into trouble and stuff like that and they kind of all got together and said, you know, what is going on? I mean, all I can think about all day long is when is the next time I can take my jewel? Um, 
they were having a lot of issues. They were, their grades were slipping. They were getting kicked off of sports. And they said, you know, this is supposed to be safe for you. What's going on? And so they went to Stanford University and they said, hey, help us. Like, we want to do this research project. Help us figure out what is going on. And what they ended up finding out is that there was nicotine salts in there. Um, the flavors were hooking kids and that um, the nicotine is actually bad for you. And so they started this um, group called Jewelers Against Jewel, and there's lots and lots of information on that. They were also finding that the, um, not being FDA regulated, that the nicotine pods, the jewel pods, um, were actually containing anywhere from equivalent to one pack of cigarettes all the way up to nine packs of cigarettes versus having the same consistency. And so they started promoting of like um, that you had to be 21 in order to purchase um, the any type of e-cigarette or vape. So a little bit about Juul. They evolved in the market about 2015. Um, they, they had increased their sales from 2015 to 2017 by 641%, which is huge. So they went from making $2.2 million to $16.2 million in a very short period of time. This was really wonderful for the company, of course, and all the employees. They ended up getting um, some bonuses and they were almost worth a million dollars. Um, also great for the company is that they were finding out they were now starting to conquer most of the market for e-cigarettes. They were controlling 29% um, of the total e-cigarettes, which is about 75% of the total share. Big money. And so tobacco, the other tobacco companies were starting to look at this and saying, hey, we're starting to lose some of our money. People aren't smoking as much. How do we make our product better? And so their strategy was like, let's make it more colorful, flavorful. And so then we can also get people to jewel and smoke or chew. And so they found, they started finding then this increase um, in because of the bright colorful packages and the flavors, but yet they still have to put on their product. It's not a safe alternative to cigarettes or may cause cancer. So nicotine salts. This is where it became very revolutionary and why it was more appealing. So if you've ever smoked a cigarette, they taste horrible. Um, they're very alkaline. I don't know if you've looked at chemistry at all, but alkalinity um, makes it very harsh flavor. And so in the market, what they did was they actually um, added a benzoic acid. That benzoic acid made it into like a light cigarette or a menthol cigarette. So it made it more into neutral pH. So it tasted better. Well, nicotine salts that the um, Juul did was it was a way of adding another chemical on and it created more of this acidic base, which made it taste a whole lot better, a lot more friendly. The problem with this is that think of like a lemon drop. If you take a lemon drop or take lemon, straight lemon into your mouth, it's very puckery in a sense. And you also then start salivating a little bit more. Well, this made a really great um, delivery system for the jewel. So if you take a cigarette and you smoke it, it goes into your into your lungs, and then there's blood vessels in the lungs, and those lungs then it goes up to the brain. Well, the nicotine salt actually helps to change that pH and force it into um, a different mechanism. So what happens is because you salivate. Um, that opens up those blood vessels a little bit more so into the mouth. And so you're actually within seven seconds will have gotten the nicotine buzz off of the jewel because of that nicotine salt instead of it taking, you know, like 30 to 40 seconds. Um, and so that increased the nicotine in those neural receptors as well. So Electronic um, cigarettes don't contain tobacco, but they also do contain a lot of really bad chemicals. I'm only going to talk about five of them today. Aluminum is one of them. It's found in foil, soda cans, vacuum cleaners, hairspray cans, toasters, kitchen utensils, and in a solid form, it's not harmful to us. But remember how we're going to heat it up to 662 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to take it from a liquid into a... Um, or a solid liquid to a um, vapor form, this will cause chemical pneumonia in kids. This will increase toxic levels causing um, slow growth 
and also deformed bones. Cadmium, which we find in our cell phones, um, low levels of this vaporized will cause nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Silver found in photography, mirrors, medical equipment, jewelry. Vapor form will cause breathing problems, lung and throat irritation, stomach pain. And even with prolonged exposure, this can cause um, permanent blue-gray staining of the eyes, nose, mouth, throat, and skin. And then lead, which is found in pipes, um, in roofing, paint, radiation, repellent um, aprons. Actually, back in the 70s, a lot of our paint had um, lead-based, and it was outlawed due to the fact that children were chewing on like maybe their crib that was painted or picking um, paint off the walls and, and consuming it. And that ended up having a lot of digestive issues. And they were also showing some um, decrease in their IQ level. Well, now again, we're putting it into a product, um, vaporizing. This will cause nerve damage, digestive issues, and even death. And in young people, significantly uh, drop in their IQ level. And then diacetyl, which is found in microwave popcorn. Um, this gives flavor, that nice um, buttery flavor. Um, it's used in a lot of vape liquids and for their flavors, such as cheesecake, caramel, watermelon, pomegranate, and cherry crush use a lot of it. Um, creme brulee is another one as well. So FDA, which is the Food Drug Administration, um, they looked at it and said, you know, a small amount of this being consumed is okay. Um, but they were finding that inhalation was causing popcorn lung. Interesting story of how they found this is that in the year 2000, um, a microwave popcorn company in Missouri, all of a sudden a lot of their employees were having problems with um, a lot of bronchitis, lung issues, coughs, colds, kind of a thing. ER doctor there was like, hey, you know what, we need to kind of What's going on here? We need to kind of test and see what's going on. Um, they started doing all these scans, finding that they were all working at the same company and um, even did some biopsies. And what they were finding is that um, inside the lung, which looks like little grape clusters, have um, they were starting to get a lot of scarring and stuff in there and like this plaque buildup. And what they were finding was that this diacetyl Again, because it went from a liquid into a vapor and it kind of congeals um, into the lung area, it was like big chunks of diacetyl um, chemical in there. And the only way to really get rid of it was actually by, we'd have to have your lungs removed in order to get rid of this. So it is considered a new lung disease and is incurable. So what was happening is basically you're taking this liquid form, heating it really fast, and you're kind of creating a, a um, chemistry experiment in your lungs. So Truth Initiative came out and saying, you know, over the course of 50 years, tobacco companies have basically lied, misrepresented, deceived the American pub public by stating that the e-cigarettes were safe. Um, and so now really promoting that um, they're trying to dedicate and shape a culture where all young and youth um, reject tobacco use, knowing that it is not a good product. And so tobacco companies too, were also looking, okay, we'll better label things. Um, so on a can of chew here showing, if you smoke, consider this, use, chip, use chew. Switching completely to this product from cigarettes will reduce your risk of lung cancer. Well, chewing tobacco has never caused lung cancer. It causes oral and mouth cancers and a lot of GI cancers, such as mouth, um, throat, voice box, um, some leukemias, kidney, urine, urinary, um, esophageal, liver, um, stomach, pancreatic, and colorectal cancers. And so all of that, I mean, there's over 60 carcinogens. You can see how tobacco can cause problems. Um, but also the e-cigarettes with those heavy metals as well. So what was happening is that a lot of people were starting to go to the ERs and um, having a lot of lung issues, which when you look at those side effects from those heavy metals, they seem pretty vague. GI upset, um, shortness of breath, coughing, um, sounds like a common cold. Well, they started doing some more and more studies and also really more better screening of patients. And what they were finding is that um, vapors were actually 
having a lot more lung injury in a very quick amount of time. So typically when somebody smokes tobacco, usually like in 20, 30 years is where you start seeing a lot of health issues and things going on. You'll see those lung cancers and stuff happening. Um, but typically they don't start smoking a pack of cigarettes until they've been smoking for about five years or greater. Well, with vapors, what they were finding is that they were starting to um, vape one pod in a very short, within months, one whole pod, which is equivalent to one pack of cigarettes. And so we're starting to see that lung injury in, within six months to 18 months, a lot quicker than if somebody had been smoking for a number of years. So we say, don't be the next 2000 and plus pub. Right now, there are 2,051 known lung injuries um, due to vaping, and 20 of them are actually in North Dakota. So not only your health, but the other thing is like, well, what does this cost you money-wise? So I kind of did this little short analysis of like taking a jewel, how much it costs to buy a jewel um, starter kit with a couple of pods in it, and smoking a pod a day, um, within a short period of time. So the first year, you know, probably going through about 363 pods, which is about $1,500 a year. Now, provided that the pods don't go up at all, if they stayed right about $4 a, a pod. So the second year now, you're going to need more nicotine, um, starting to, you have to get a new, a new jewel every year. So now you're about $3,000. If you look at all of this and let's say you stay at two pods over the next nine years, a total of over a 10 year period of almost $28,000. That's a lot of money that could be used for other things. But not only that, what does it do to the environment? What are you throwing away? 10 joules over, I'm looking at just a 10 year period, 10 joules, 365 pods for the first year, 730 pods over, times nine years, you're looking at almost 7,000 pods in 10 years for one person. When over 2 million youth are actually vaping, this is equivalent to 7.3 million pods a year. Then you add the adults. We're talking over 4 billion pods and jewels a year. Um, so now remember when I was talking about like nicotine and also heavy metals. Well, Nicotine in those pods isn't completely gone, so it's still in there. There have actually been um, some issues with some of the liquid e-vapes um, that they leak or children lick them. They smell great. They taste good. Adults licking them or um, sorry, not not adults, but um, dogs and, and animals licking it. There's actually been several instances where dogs have licked or chewed on the vapes that got nicotine poisoning and died. Um, also the heavy metals as well. So you think, well, if it's contained, you throw it away, no big deal, right? Well, we don't have a recycling. Um, there's no recycling going on right now for the e-cigarettes. Um, Colorado is actually looking into it, but nothing has been established at this time. So let's say that you throw out your pod outside. Um, how, how does that harm me, right? So if somebody runs over it, or let's say it gets mowed, gets cut, broken somehow, it rains or it snows, it starts leaking into our water system, whether it goes into our um, water filtration system or if it goes to the river, because our water filtration also picks it up from the river. And so what happens is, we eventually, when you start using your tap water, will actually start absorbing some of that nicotine and also those heavy metals. So um, it becomes basically a waste and a biohazard um, potential harmful to all others who are vaping or not vaping. So Philip Morris owns most of the um, e-cigarettes and tobacco products and they bought Juul, um, which is a they own Altria, which is a um, jewel own, is owned by Altria. Altria is owned by Philip Morris. Um, so what are some of the things that we can do? Well, we know that if we um, start adding taxes, um, increasing the taxes on tobacco products and also including e-cigarettes and vapes as a tobacco product, um, that taxation will help with um, some health care problems, but also um, the awareness and getting people help to quit. Right now there are eight states that have imposed a tax on 
e-cigarettes and um, have raised their taxes on tobacco as well. So what else can you do? Well, there's also um, some websites, becomeanx.org, thetruth.com, stillblowingsmoke.org, flavorshookkids.org, counter tobacco, the real cost to be tobacco free. All of these have some really great information on them. Um, one that I really like is called um, My Life, My Quit. This can be done like an app um, it, so that it can be confidential and finding ways to support um, anybody who is using. Also, some other ones are Becoming an Ex, North Dakota Quit Line, um, Talking to Your Nurse or um, Physician, Nurse Practitioner, Your Doctor, um, Respiratory Therapist, um, at Bismarck Cancer Center, I also do a tobacco cessation here. Um, there are some really good apps that are listed uh, that I don't have them on my um, chart here, but my quit coach, cessation nation, quit now, exclamation mark, quit KWIT, get rich or die smoking, smoke free, uh, quit tracker. All of these can be apps that you can do um, discretion wise so that if you don't want to tell your parents um, or maybe your parent is vaping and trying to get them to quit as well. So some questions in that that you may have. Um, but one of the things I want to do is just kind of summarize here real quick. So we know that e-cigarettes and vaping are not our friends. They have some health issues. They contain nicotine, robbing our brain. Um, they, their marketing with flavors is deceiving and is not safe. Um, it costs us money, our teeth, and it harms our environment. So finding ways to quit. Um, if you have further questions, definitely contact um, me at Bismarck Cancer Center. Um, talk to a teacher, talk to friends, finding ways to quit. Um, and hopefully keeping you safe from being the next 2000 club or any injuries to your lungs. Thank you. Bye.